I truly believe that when women embrace their femininity and become the best version of themselves, men just have to catch up. That's it. Like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like this thing of like, we keep looking at what's men doing your femininity and your, and your whole sense of being and your worth and your value and your identity shouldn't be wrapped up in what men are doing. Guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's your girl Amanda Speaks. And first of all, if you haven't heard about Amanda Speaks, you don't know who I am. You don't know who Mandy Squad is. I don't know where you've been in. I don't know what's going on. But we're so happy that you made it to this video, made it to this channel. And if you want to become a part of this amazing family, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button beside it so you don't miss any further videos. And today, guys, we got another guest. We got another guest. She's an amazing woman of God. Not no cap, no nothing. She's an amazing woman of God. She is beautiful, as you can clearly see. Very beautiful <laughs> and very encouraging. But I'm not gonna really introduce, I'm gonna let her introduce herself, tell us a little bit about herself, what she's doing, you know, her ministries or whatever else she wants to tell us about her life. Okay, hey everyone. Hey Mandy Squad. That's what they are. Yes. <laughs> What's up, Mandy Squad? It's Jumaka. Um, Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Um, I honor the woman of God that has allowed me to speak here and pour into y'all. So I'm very grateful to be here. And um, I have to tell them about me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, so my name is Jumaka. Um, I hate this question. Because <laughs> it's like, what do I say? Um... I'm I'm great. <laughs> it's giving interview vibes. Uh, I'm a great woman because God said so. Um, what do I do? Okay, I have two ministries, nonprofit ministries, um, Single on Purpose International, which is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry that empowers women to discover their purpose through Christ Jesus. I also I'm in the founder and the director of another nonprofit ministry, Prophetia, in which we disciple gifted and prophetic Christians. And I am also the owner of Godly Feb, the brand. Um, that's uh, a brand under my business and my coaching consulting business. And I've written a book, <laughs> Cracking the Dream Code. A uh, practical and a biblical approach to dream interpretation. And what do I like to do? Let me see. Hmm. I like to crack jokes. I like to eat a goosey. Um, yeah. And I'm just ready to get the show on the road. Woo! <laughs> As you guys can clearly see, she's fun. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you so much for the introduction. I personally didn't want to pronounce your name wrong, so I definitely needed you to introduce yourself. It's okay. Alrighty, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about femininity. And I'm personally going to enjoy this because I've had issues with femininity, not necessarily um, what it is, but more so how do you incorporate that as a Christian? And based on how you're taught, you'll understand why I say what I say. So I'll preface it by saying, um, based on just even personal experience, I feel as though the fun, the sexy, the exciting has been taken out of, you know, just being a Christian, a woman of God, you know, being in the church. And I don't really, that never sit right with me. It's always as though it's giving the impression of you're supposed to be plain Jane, not really supposed to take care of yourself like that. You know, you're always supposed to be unappealing. That's what they kind of give off. But at the same like time... That. Yeah, like at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, it says that what they're attracted to or what they want in a wife or whatever is not what they're telling you to do. And that never sit right with me at all. So I guess the first question I would have for you is what would you classify femininity to be based on your experience, your knowledge and your teachings? Okay, so I had to think about this and... To be honest, I think I can explain and illustrate it better than I can define it. Um, okay. Yeah, because sometimes it's like, because femininity is, I would say it's more so abstract and not concrete. It's kind of difficult to put it into a definition. Like, for example, if you say something like the occult, how, how do you 
like you know what i'm saying like even if you look at the dictionary definition it's like hidden secret you know it's kind of difficult to classify certain things that are a bit abstract so um in the word of god it says um in genesis one i don't know exactly it's like further down it says um he they made mankind in their image male and female they created them right now when we think about that male and female the greek words for those two things are not the same as man and woman right mm. that's one two we're made in the image of god we're not made in the physicality of god right the image of god is not about how i look right it's not about my body parts that's not what makes me in the image of god there's something that god has put in both genders that reflects his character that reflects his image so when we think about femininity femininity is more so a a spiritual thing right to be a feminine woman is is not necessarily like it's different because some people think femininity like oh all women are feminine no not really you're just a woman right <laughs> you could be a woman why because you have female reproductive organs that makes you a woman yeah. but what is that female that the bible is talking about how are male and female different but both made in the image of god we have different roles we have different functions right um in this world and society in our marriages um church all that stuff right so what what does that look like and that's what femininity seeks to discuss and uncover okay i love that i like it it's, it's you brought up the spiritual part because I never really thought about it, but I know that not all females are feminine, but I never really thought of putting the two together for some strange reason. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, most most of us don't because it is normal to assume I'm a I'm a woman. I'm feminine. Like how are you going to tell me I'm not feminine? But it's like that just makes you a woman, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like that's why it's like when we're talking about femininity and even the way that I teach and I discuss it, it's not about your behaviors it's not about how you look it's not about wearing pink it's not about society that's not what femininity is and unfortunately a lot of people have uh been duped <laughs> when it comes to what true femininity is and it's not this cookie cutter thing of you have to fit this mold or you have to be like this because you have a lot of women who look the part but they're not feminine You got a lot of. But you women. had to dive a little deeper in that. In oh, in um, how some women look the part, but they're not feminine. Yeah. So you have a lot of women who. This is what I would classify it as. There's different schools of thoughts when it comes to this femininity movement, and a lot of people, especially in the secular world, and some even people who are, they say they're Christians, but it's more Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Um, <laughs> They are engaging in what I would consider patriarchal femininity, right? And okay. it becomes this thing of pick meism, right? I can do this, I wear this, I do this. But something I teach when it comes to femininity is that femininity exists outside of masculinity, right? I could be a feminine woman outside of a masculine man. As yes. a single woman by myself, I'm feminine. And something I also teach is that femininity is not about your life being an audition for how useful you are to a man and what appeals to a man. Yeah, no, that's patriarchal Ooh. femininity. Oh, men like yeah. this and they like this scent and they like women. What does that have to, the Bible says that. It is God's opinion. That's it. God's mm. opinion is, like, am I here trying to, um, what's it called? Find the approval of man or of God? That's what Paul said. Ooh. I'm not here trying to find the approval of men, right? Yeah. So that's patriarchal femininity that, oh, what do men like? What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Only one man's opinions matters when it comes to your physicality. And that's your husband. He's the only person who, whose opinion matters to you. Not every man in the world. Because you're not going to marry every man in the world. And guess what? That one man that will be for you you can be in a fruitful and a loving and a wonderful marriage with that person by simply being yourself. Embracing who God said that you are. There's someone out there for you. 
you don't have to people please because really sometimes like femininity it becomes people pleasing to some of these women it becomes a, a form of people yeah. pleasing and people bondage of like oh I hear some femininity people in the secular world say men don't like that hairstyle. Men don't like blonde on black girls. Oh, they don't like this. They don't like this. They don't. And I'm like, when did my life become <laughs> like, <laughs> when did it become an audition for men on yeah. how useful and how appealing and whatever I am to a man? And I don't even find myself appealing. So what? Because mm. guess what? Men change every day. One day they say skinny is in, the next day they say thick is in. What? Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to yeah. keep trying to keep up with the status quo and keep up with what men say is appropriate for me. Nah, mm -mm. I'm going to God. Holy Spirit. Ooh. <laughs> God. First and foremost. <laughs> like you just, you went in, like you even went into the other question because I was going to ask like, yo, you know, does femininity have a look? Because what is happening now and even i've been guilty of it and stuff where a lot of persons who follow these femininity gurus you know follow these women who tell you okay it's really since a lot of people now have been talking about this soft life and they'll tell you that you need to yeah you need to dress this way you need to act this way you need to speak this way you need to have this type of hairstyle and i'm just like what <laughs> at this rate I'm going to be, as you said, adjusting to their like and their trend. And we know that trend changes. And I'm not even going to be satisfied with where I am. Mm -hmm. So I even want you to just speak on just how do you build that femininity within a woman? Like, how do you build that in yourself? Well, before I answer that question, I wanted to address what you had just said about the whole softness thing, right? And, um, yeah. you know, looking like change your voice and this, this and this. Here's the issue, not just with femininity, I just think with the world in general, right? I think even believers, believers fall into this too. I think we need to do a better job of stating when something is an opinion, right? We try to make things a blanket statement for everyone without addressing nuances, right? I think that could be damaging, okay? So... I do see in some women's walk, perhaps they change those things because it confirmed what the transformation that was happening on the inside, right? Like, I don't want to be rough and tough and buff, right? I, I don't want that. Like, may, yeah, maybe they want the soft life and that's okay. And it's like, you know what? To remind me of being soft, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z things. But do you see, and I think another thing that's, that's problematic but I get it because not everybody has a gift of teaching. I understand. That's the reason why I have the gift that I do. There has to be a bit more teaching and explaining and not just blanket yeah. statements. Like you got to walk people through things, you know? So you see how I just explained that? You're like, oh, okay, that's why she did that. But now if you're taking that as a formula based on what she said, applying it to your life and it doesn't even, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like, <laughs> because like, yeah. you weren't struggling with the same thing that she was struggling with. Do you understand? So yeah. for some women, I've even heard some women say like, yeah, like I felt conviction to like only wear dresses or something like that because I know me and I was struggling with a Jezebelic spirit and being masculine and yada, la, 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 la. And that's their journey, right? I had never struggled with that. I've always been a girly girl. Like <laughs> I've always been a girly girl. Like I don't struggle in that way. So yes, that was your journey. And that's what the Holy Spirit gave you personal conviction for and that's great mm -hmm. you know and this is why in femininity i try to more focus on general concepts and not get into mm -hmm. specific things unless if i'm giving a testimony about my personal life right because that's just a testimony i don't like making blanket statements saying you need to do this and you need to do that no this is my opinion of what you should do take it back to the lord chew the meat and spit out the bones yeah yeah you know, so that's personally what I've learned as far as like when you are listening to some people, there has to be more of like teaching. There has to be more um, concept building when it comes to femininity so that people can apply it for themselves and they have the tools to apply things for themselves. Because if not, we're just copying each other. Yeah, that's definitely. It. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's what I want to say. Um, 
I love that, and I keep I when you're speaking, I'm hearing basically making allowances for everybody's difference mm-hmm. because I, what flew into my mind when you were speaking is you have some women who they're seen as aggressive or mm-hmm. assertive, but they're actually very feminine. It's just that they have standards and they conduct themselves in a way where to somebody else it may seem as though you're trying too hard or you're playing too hard to get the the real extremes or to somebody else it's like they just don't understand it like how can you be both because for me i think i'm a mixture in the sense of you have that shy side you have that assertive side but everything still mixes in femininity so i know that you said that femininity is more of a spiritual thing but is there a way you can kind of go into it in a way where there is it that there are certain characteristics that will be seen across the board no matter mm-hmm. how you are or is there more to it i would say in so many words yes there are some things that are across the board but here's another thing too which is why we got to be careful is there's some things that we are defining as feminine and masculine that are not feminine or masculine right and i've heard some women say things like um they're teaching right they're like well i'm in my masculine right now and when i'm done i need to get back into my feminine and i said how did a yeah. spiritual gift become feminine or masculine that's not what the word of god says you know even when it came to priscilla and akila priscilla what do they they instructed a um some brother in Christ and they corrected him on the side is okay. now she is she now in her masculine because she was instructing and correcting someone people say things like leadership is masculine it depends but again leadership is a gift look at yeah, Deborah she yeah. was a judge are we going to say that she's not feminine because she was in her masculine that doesn't make sense you know mm-hmm. so that's why like who is defining what feminine and masculine is the word of god And then there's some things that again it's just an opinion. Okay? Mm-hmm. There's some things that is your opinion on what's feminine or what's masculine. There's some things that um Yeah, I mean I, I would just say like yeah, there's certain things that and, and there's some things that like for example, I don't know, let's just say something like being rude in public. They say, mm-hmm. "Oh, that's very masculine behavior." No, that's just uncool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not feminine or masculine. Do you see what I'm trying to say like it's just uncouth. Yeah. It's just not socially acceptable for anyone. It's this is not a masculine behavior. This is just uncouth. Okay? So, yeah. I do think that like when we're talking about the mixing in and being in the masculine and being in the feminine, it's like there's some things that are not really neither, right? And then there's some things again when it comes to women yeah it is across the board you know because women are different than men let let's take away all the p- political correctness women yeah. are different than men not just in physicality but in the way we approach life right there's a lot of generality um like generalities that you see across the board when it comes to a lot of women why cuz god made us different we're different from men That's okay. The Bible even says we're the weaker vessels. That doesn't mean I don't think that's a diss personally. I just think it shows that women are meant to be protected. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And again, that that's a masculine trait to be able to protect, right? I don't have to be the one that's defending myself and protecting myself. Like that's masculine, right? We could talk about and it can come from trauma, from being vulnerable mm-hmm. emotionally. physically, financially from childhood. So now, oh, let me turn off my uh, do not disturb. Okay. Like that can be considered masculine. Right? Mm-hmm. When I'm sitting here again, a lot of a lot of things that m- make a woman unfeminine, it's not because oh, she's in her ma- no, it just comes from trauma. Like <laughs> and that's how I explain mm-hmm. it too and I'm like If you look at your spirit, like your soul, there are holes in your soul, right? From trauma or whatever, but your spirit knows that it's feminine. Your spirit, that's why I always say that when you are a born again believer, the Holy Spirit only encourages you to be more feminine. <laughs> right? 
because that's how you were made. You were made to be protected. You were made yeah. to be loved. You were made to create, to nurture. That's how God made you. That's how he made you. I'll give an example of how femininity and masculinity, how they can like, you know. So again, women are meant to be protected. The Bible says that we're the weaker vessels. There's a reason why we're not going out to war. We're not fighting people. Why? Because there is some, there, there is a, a biblical concept that women are precious. They're meant to be protected, right? Now, let's say growing up, you were not protected financially, right? Let's just say your daddy wasn't there. You have daddy issues. Now you grow up with this sense of, I have to be the provider because I'm fearful. I don't want to be vulnerable like that. So now I'm sitting here trying to get all these accolades, try to do all this, try to do all this and trying to, because I, 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 I hated this, the, the, the feeling of being vulnerable because that was a man's job to protect you financially and they failed. That's the truth. And this is how you can be in your masculine. Do you, do you see Not to say that you can't get jobs, but I'm saying like the motivation behind it, that mm -hmm. fear, because you as a woman, you know, instinctively, I was supposed to be protected. Spiritually, you're supposed to be protected. This whole thing of, oh, all my life I had to fight and I got to go 40, no, 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 <laughs> no. Yeah. Like this thing that we're doing in the church, I don't believe in it. Where are the men at? We're not supposed to be unprotected spiritually. The man is the head. He's supposed to be the spiritual head. If the enemy comes to attack, it shouldn't attack me first. It should attack you. <laughs> like, I'm the woman. I should be able to hide behind you as a man. Mm. Do, do you understand? Because I'm supposed to be yeah. protected. Right? When it comes to things like uh, um, mentally, emotionally, I don't have to be strong all the time. That's not right. Actually, this thing of I can't cry because I got to keep it together because I don't have a space to be safe. I don't have a space to just be vulnerable. Yeah. I don't have that. I didn't have that growing up. So it was all. So now I have to have this defense to protect myself. But yeah. again, it was a man's job to protect me in that way. That was a man's job. So this is the things I'm saying about masculine and feminine, right? That we can yeah. even go straight to the word of God. Like this is what's different, right? As a woman, I'm meant to nurture. Even look at biology. It's a man that technically he's the one who creates life when he inseminates a woman, but it's a woman who nurtures. Yeah. The Bible says men are the head, but women are in the entire body. The entire body. We give the body mobility. A man can have a vision, but it's a woman that's going to take him there. Oh, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking too much. I'm sorry, girl. Let me back up. Let me no, back up. That is really good. Wow. <laughs> that heat. That heat. Wow. Continue. Sorry. That one just really hit right there. <laughs> <laughs> that that is so good though. Like, and it, it's so good that you brought up that because what was going through my mind was a sequence, you know, of like God being the head and then the man and then the woman and stuff. That was always going through my head. But then when you mentioned that he's the head and that we're the whole body and we give it mobility, what? And then we take him there. Wait. <laughs> Look, man, that's why I said like, God is not, go like, Holy Spirit's not going to encourage you to be masculine. No. Like, you have a role. You can't, you can't have two heads. Mm -hmm. You can't. And there's nothing, it doesn't make you inferior because a man can't go nowhere without you. Even the Bible says, he who finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. His favor is tied in you. He can't Ooh. get no favor with from God until he finds a wife. There's so many aspects of femininity. Ooh. I'm like, why are we, you know, <laughs> like it, it's, it doesn't make you less than. It's not mm -hmm. about, oh, looking cute for men. I'm like, y'all missed it. That's why I said we got to talk about concepts, not just yeah. wearing pink and doing this and doing that. It's like, no, there's concepts, biblical concepts to grasp and when it comes to femininity. Ooh, wow. Okay, kind of just messing my head. But, <laughs> but there are some things that you mentioned 
And just something else that popped up. But first, you mentioned even them being the protector and stuff, you know, giving us protection and stuff. And while I also think about that, I also want us to rem- remember rather that we are also protecting his heart. Because we always like to talk about the Proverbs 31 woman. You know, everybody's like, I want to find a Proverbs 31 woman and I want to be Proverbs 31. And a lot of times we don't really look into the entirety of the Proverbs 31 woman. That it's not just, you know, taking care of the house and cooking and da 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 da. But there are other layers. Powerhouse. I'm sorry, I can't fit in you, but it's like, <laughs> she was a powerhouse. She was a lot. Like, when I actually looked into the scripture and realized, all that she did and the characteristics and her mindset and everything. I'm like, wait, half of us don't even reach that because we're more just saying, okay, a woman being in the house, taking care of this, cooking, like the wifely duties, but there was so much more to her. And if your your husband, your spouse cannot find protection in you as well, it's going to be difficult for them to protect you. You know what I mean? Because they're also, go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish. Oh, I'm just going to say that there. it would also give them a trauma. Because you're talking about traumas. And if we're not protected, you know, em- emotionally, financially, and stuff like that. Understand also that if a man's heart is unguarded and it's not protected, it has repercussions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say that, yeah, I agree. I would just say that instead of protect, I'm like, I feel like it's a, it's a sense of safety. Um, mm-hmm. I think men need to feel safe, but not that we have to protect men. I, you know, I'm like, I get what you're saying. And maybe like, you could be right. I don't know. <laughs> I could be wrong. I, I may not know what I'm talking about, but the way that I'm thinking about it in my mind is more of like, men need to feel safe, right? They mm-hmm. need to feel, and this is where the whole femininity, masculine people say it. Yeah. You know, this thing of being cantankerous, this thing of uh, being argumentative, this thing of trying to change a man, this thing of, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, you're doing... ain't no man gonna feel safe. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no man gonna feel safe. So when you're talking about protecting his heart, I, I, I agree with the concept. I think for me, I would just say like, you know, men just need to feel safe. Um, because if they don't feel safe and they feel unsafe, you know, so it's That's like fun. you even stepping, <laughs> into your masculine and be like, oh, it's my job to fix it. Nah, that's like, let me not even say masculine or what, that's just manipulation. Just don't do it, you know, <laughs> don't do it. Stop trying to change people. I tell yeah. women this, like when it comes to how to date like a golly feminine woman, this thing of I can change him. No, they're going to resent you. Stop trying to change people. Okay. That's a trauma response. You don't have to change people. You are not, oh, okay. You're not their God. Okay. You're not their protector. You are, you know the the help me if you are married to someone and or you just you're a woman i always say like i can't teach a grown man how to be a man of god i'm not a man so this thing of i'm better than you and i have to teach you how because you don't know how to read the bible you don't know how to do this you don't know how to do that and like now you're taking a moral high ground and you're gonna fall into the same trap as Eve dude (laughs) you're gonna fall into the same trap it's like oh i'm better than my husband i can do stuff i could lead him this thing of trying to lead men stop trying to lead men like, I don't like, it's like, you can't complain that a Ooh. man don't know how to be a man and you don't let him. That's, you don't let him, oh. you know? So, so it's like, as a woman, just focus on yourself and focus on your femininity. This is why I keep saying femininity exists outside of masculinity. Stop focusing on what men is doing and what they not doing. You focus on your femininity. You embrace your femininity. I'm sorry, that, that's, ooh, okay. Sorry. Yo. I'm telling you, this is this is blessing me and this is blessing you. Wow. <laughs> and I, I love, I love because I think I've seen it, especially in today's society, and I've heard people speak about it. But you know, even taking away the rules from the men, like not allowing them to be men. And I think that's so important because if we're trying to teach them how to be one, when, when do we get time to be woman? It's not my job. <laughs> it's not my job. Listen, man, you, you got to put up, put up that superhero cape. And I think it's just, it's a, again, it's a trauma response from not being protected, from not allowed, being allowed to be in your feminine, not being taught generational feminine principles. You know what I'm saying? Like femininity education. You just didn't have that. So that's just how you just know to do. That's how your mama knew to do. That's how your grandmama knew to do it. It's like, eh, this ain't it. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, man. Like men are different. And it's like, I think for the lot of women, because we stay in our own echo chambers, we're expecting men to be like women. They're not women. Like, yeah. (laughs) yeah, they're different. You know, let them be men. Not in a weird, not in a, you know, dismissive way, but it's like, you can't complain that men are not doing X, Y, and Z and you don't let them and you don't challenge them. And when I say challenge, I'm not talking about going toe to toe. You can challenge people with your absence. You can challenge people by keeping quiet. You can challenge people with your gentleness. You can challenge people with the way you approach conflict in a way that is not aggressive and a way that is feminine. You can challenge people in these ways, but you don't. You're going toe to toe because you think you you want to be masculine too and you're going toe to toe with the man. Nah, man, it's not it. Like, no. it's not it. Okay. Same. Like you said. Like, on the toes. Yeah, it's like, you need to feel, that's why I like, I mean, in worldly femininity, they use femininity on how to get a man. Godly femininity isn't, again, it's not about men. I truly believe that when women embrace their femininity and become the best version of themselves, men just have to catch up. That's it. Like, that's Love it. That. You know what I'm saying? Love like, that. This thing of like, we keep looking at what's men do. Your femininity and your and your whole sense of being and your worth and your value and your identity shouldn't be wrapped up in what men are doing. I'm sorry. Mm. That's it. It should be wrapped up in who God said that you are. Getting your affirmation from God. Being everything that God told you to be. <sighs> Can I go take a deep breath for this? You mentioned <laughs> principles. <laughs> You mentioned principles <laughs> of um, like generational principles of femininity. And I'm kind of curious, um, are there like any top three that you could just share with us right now? Yes. One, you're the prize. <laughs> women, especially black women don't know. Again, it's this is biblical actually. You are the prize. And I said, I'm like, I just used two scriptures just to validate my point that women are the prize. One, like I said, in... Uh, was it Proverbs? Whatever. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. When he finds you, he obtains favor. Therefore, you're the prize. The end. Yeah. Number two, when the Bible says that um, in Genesis 1, that um, the Lord God blessed them, said, be fruitful, be multiplied, yada, yada, yada. The Bible says he blessed them. As we see in the next chapter, Adam was not blessed in his singleness until he became one with Eve. So who's the prize here, right? <laughs> if you if you were the prize, you would be blessed by yourself. There's a reason why I said, God says, go find a wife and then I'm gonna bless you. You're the prize. So if you're the prize, stop treating men as if they're the prize. That's why I said this, that's patriarchal femininity, that your whole life is about, oh, what are men saying? What? But you're the prize though. And when you go into marriage and when you go into life, believing as if you are inferior to men, right? That you're not good enough until a man validates you. And this thing of like chasing, that's that's masculine. Men are supposed to chase you because you're the prize. This thing that we're doing by trying to be seductive, trying to find out what they do and trying to do this, trying to, again, this people pleasing behavior, we are proving that men are the prize. Oh, he didn't call me. I'm going to double text him. I'm going to see where he's at. How come you don't like me? But you're the prize, though. He yeah. sits there and says, hey, you want to hang out? And you just say, yeah. Do you have any standards? You don't even make him work to earn you? You know what I'm saying? You don't even like... <laughs> and another thing, too, outside of just masculinity and being the prize, treat yourself like the prize. If you understand... Yes, if you understand mm. that you are the prize, right? This is the part of femininity that, again, it's inc- it's incomplete. But the reason why we talk about luxury and being high maintenance and being alluring is because we understand the feminine principle that we are the prize. If you were a Rolls Royce, you would treat yourself like a Rolls Royce, right? You can't say that, <laughs> are you a hoop or are you a Rolls Royce? And when you understand that you're a Rolls Royce, you treat yourself like a Rolls Royce, yeah. right? You increase your value. You increase the level of maintenance about you. You become a good steward of yourself, of your body, of, of, of your mind, everything about you that God has given you, become a good steward of it because you understand its value. You're the prize. 
you're not the prize when a man finds you. No, you're already he who finds a who? A wife. Did he find a girlfriend? Did he find a little girl? Who did he find? He found a wife. You're already a wife when a man meets you, right? But if you don't show up as a wife, if you show up as a hookup, if you show up as a foster girlfriend, you know, uh -huh, you know, your wife. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, the prophetic is coming Ooh. out. But it's just like you know, what I'm saying like, yeah, that is a big thing that I feel like, especially when it comes to black women, we don't we didn't have that. Like, we didn't have that mm. taught to us um, that we're the prize. We're taught that men are the prize. That your whole life is about what can you do for a man, and your worth is based on what does a man say that you are not who God says that you are, not understand the feminine principle. Like I'm supposed to be the one that's being chased. Okay. So if you don't like me, somebody will, because <laughs> guess what? I'm the prize, right? I'm the prize. So if you don't like it, move on, keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. Oh, you're too high maintenance. I said, well, someone will pay my bride price. Keep going. That's another thing about being high maintenance. It's like, no, this is my bride price. This is my level of maintenance. This is how I was maintaining myself in my father's house, my heavenly father's house. This is how he was maintaining me. And you want me to leave my father's house to go to the ghetto? I'm not going. <laughs> my father <laughs> has been treating me like a princess, right? He has loved me. He has provided for me. Again, my father and his masculinity has protected me. And I'm going to leave my father's house to go to the ghetto. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to do by here. I'm going to do my nails. I'm going to look cute. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to eat well. I'm going to rest good. I'm telling you, when I said this is blessing me, y'all don't even understand. Wow. And I want you to, to people to understand also, because you mentioned, well, you didn't mention it yet. But in the sense of, it's not saying that men don't have value, basically. Mm -hmm. But you're saying, coming from a biblical standpoint. <laughs> yeah, to say men are, men, I mean, women are the prize. Like, you don't have to be insecure about that. It's like saying women are the weaker vessels. Yeah, because we need to be protected. You know, like, it, it doesn't yeah. mean someone is inferior than the other. But again, who's proposing to who? Who's pay paying the bride price? If you are saying that you're the prize and I should pursue you, would you as a man feel okay with me proposing to you? Because I pursued you up until this point, right? Should I keep pursuing you? And most men will feel uncomfortable with that. Why? Because you know you're supposed to be the one pursuing a woman. You're pursuing mm. prize, right? So I don't know who I'm talking to, men or women, but it's just like, I'm just giving spiritual, but also practical reasons why women are the prize. They're the ones that are supposed to be pursued. They're the ones that are supposed to be protected, not the other way around. Yeah. That's a reversal. Yeah. <laughs> I remember what even somebody that I listened to, I listened to their podcast. And one thing that they, they stress and this is from a man. He's like, women are never to pursue. Women are to present, and the man is to pursue. I was like, woo. Oh, that's something I've said to um, an SOP more so, not like in Godly Fem, but I always say that it's a man's job to pursue, but it's a woman's job to be positioned and to guide a man's pursuit. Okay. So <laughs> she said, <laughs> so women are not supposed to pursue. All you do, what he said is, is correct. It's biblically correct. You just present yourself. That's it. All you have to do is look pretty. Like, not even look pretty, but like there's different ways to be positioned. I don't want to make a blanket statement. Everyone's positioning looks different. For some people, it comes with, let's be honest, your physicality. And this is why we talk about looks and appearance when it comes to femininity, because God made man and woman different. That's it. So if you as a woman you show that you don't take care of yourself, right? A man does not, he doesn't see that as a prize because it doesn't look like a prize. He's not going to pursue that prize. And this is not pressure on women to conform to a certain yeah. mold. That, that's not, that's why I say, I don't believe in that type of femininity. But again, taking care of yourself, you're the prize. It's not about yeah. wearing a certain type of dress and makeup. That's not the point. The point is that you value yourself and you show yeah. up in a way that shows that you honor and you value yourself, right? This is the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> so that is part of positioning. So if you have halitosis and you have bad BO, I mean, no, for real, that's part of presentation, right? Like, let's just make it very yeah. practical. 
A man is supposed to not be like, oh, oh, well, I should take her as she is. You stay though. You know, and it's like, it sounds like just a whole. <laughs> I'm just saying something very simple like that, right? Like, we can understand yeah. how that, you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, oh, shoot, girl, you're not smelling good. Nope. You know what I'm saying? We would, want, we would take a step back, right? Yeah. Let's forget about the makeup and the hair and all that, the bags. I'm just saying, like, show that you care about yourself, that you care about your body, that you even things like rest and, um, you know, working out, eating right. These show, these show just not even just men, but the world that you are a good manager of your body, being a high maintenance woman, right? Being yeah, high yeah. maintenance, rest, eat well, take care of yourself, take care of your skin, take, you know, just basic things like that. Okay. Are we going to argue about that? <laughs> like, come on. So yeah, like, and also like guiding a man's pursuit. This is a huge part of femininity. Why? I feel like depending on some women who are stuck in people pleasing, it can seem masculine, but it's not masculine. Setting boundaries is not a masculine thing. Saying no is not masculine. Being assertive with your boundaries is not masculine. So it's not masculine. Okay. This is my standard. Hey, can I kiss you? No, that's not masculine. Because <laughs> yeah. men are going to push against your boundaries. They're, they're going to see what they can get away with. And if you're not secure in yourself and you don't guide his pursuit, that's on you. That's why I said we do this people pleasing femininity. That's not it. So it's like if you as a woman, as a feminine woman who knows her identity, her worth, her value, her purpose, you walk like it. Yeah, you got to walk like it. So if a man comes to you and they're pursuing you and you're like, this is too fast. Mm, no. Can I come over? No. Hey, can I just hang out at your house? I prefer dates. Mm. That's not how I want to be courted. Because a man is going to pursue, but he's going to see what can he get away with. And that, in his mind, how you treat yourself determines his worth, your worth in his mind. I want to I wanna <laughs> tap into that whole boundary thing. Because honestly, as I said, guys, the fem this femininity is not just for you. It's for me, honestly, because it's a journey that I'm going on as well. But I love the fact that you touched on boundaries because guess what? Society doesn't tell men to drop their standards they and don't. to drop their boundaries. If they say, I want a big booty girl that sits here and is a prayer warrior and does this. No one no one says nothing. Nobody says nothing. Ain't nobody says nothing. But everybody coming for the woman say, yeah, hand, your standards are too high. Maybe you need to come down a bit. Why? Why is it that he can't come to my standards? Maybe he's just not the one. Ever thought about that? I was like, it's, it's so crazy how much we allow ourselves as women to be mistreated. And I'll say mistreated because if we, as you were saying, if we don't value ourselves, however we present ourselves is how they're going to automatically think of us as well. Mm -hmm. But now let's tap into this because we're both Christians. And I want to know why is it that the church does not talk about femininity? Why is it that what they're telling us to present is not what it actually is. Why are they hiding it rather and making it seem as though basically we're supposed to be everything that is not appealing <laughs> to ourselves and to me. Because if we're not satisfied with ourselves, there is no way I'm mean, going to be satisfied with us. Mm -hmm. Two reasons. One, patriarchy. <laughs> patriarchy. Um, the control of women, women's bodies, women's thoughts. Patriarchy. That's one. Two, I think just a lot of people, like, they hide behind their spirituality and they try to overcompensate for their lack of healing. And something I always say is that your trauma influences your theology. So if you are, and your culture influences your theology, but kingdom over culture. So for so many years, women were not seen as people. They were seen as property. They were seen as mm -hmm. objects, right? And there's still that stigma and that thinking, right? When it comes to women. Now, I love how you pointed that, like people are saying, oh, this is what we want. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. They think that's what they want. And this is something I've talked on my personal channel outside of Godly Femme. And I talked about hashtag crush the crush, right? I think in Christianity, because we know it's sinful, right? to fall into certain temptations or whatever. I think we just, again, we have wrong theology. Temptation mm -hmm. is not the sin, right? 
And I think because again, we hide behind this sense of spirituality, like this is what I'm supposed to be attracted to, but that's not what you're actually attracted to. I think because we're not honest with ourselves, we start to push this narrative and we start to, again, like overcompensate with our spirituality without just saying, you know what? I like girls with big butts. That's what you can just, you know what I'm saying? Like this, this is what I like. Yeah. But oh, I'm a man of God and only we like women who stay in the church. No, you don't. Because guess what? When there's a scandal in the church and a man is doing something or cheating on a woman, who are they cheating with? They're tight. They're tight. Can we be real? Like, yeah. They're cheating with yeah. women and they were bashing. Right? Mm. So what are we talking about here? It's a lie. It's just the stigma of what would it be like to be with a woman like that? And also, I think like a woman who uh, looks a certain way or presents herself a certain way, like there's still the stigma when it comes to women. There's still this policing, especially in the black community of how black women should look to be whole, yeah. right? So something like wearing makeup and wearing hair extensions or um, under being sensual as a woman, being in tune with your sexuality, it's seen as something like that's not for women. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And yeah. if a woman is like that, she's lustful, she's promiscuous, she's Jezebelic. And I can't, I'm like, y'all got it. <laughs> y'all got it, bro. So it's like, that's what you actually want, but you're convincing yourself that it's sinful to like that, you know, instead of submitting it to God and, you know, navigating that. You're like, well, I, I should take the woman that is the most useful and beneficial or looks the part right and not actually the woman that you may i mean again this is just me that's my own perspective because again i could be wrong because i'm not a man this is just my own observation it could be wrong but that's just what i've observed especially when it comes to the church that's good <laughs> that's good because i think also i think i said this before maybe but when we take or we don't teach proper um, femininity and stuff, what happens, or I'll say what I found that happened, not just to me, but for other persons, it's as if they start to, I don't want to say hate, but they're not satisfied with themselves. And it turns into this low self-esteem, <sighs> this scene of low self-esteem where it's like, I'm never good enough or what I really, it's like a battle as well. Wait, it's wait, like what wait, I who, want to do. Mm -hmm. Wait, who though? Woman, like in the church. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, I'll speak for myself as well as what I've heard and seen around me. Because we don't teach this femininity. We don't teach, you know, take care of yourself, you know. And then the whole thing with modesty, I can't. Mm. You can talk about that if you got time. <laughs> <laughs> <How about that? laughs> we can delve into that as well but just the whole fact of persons not really teaching what it really is what femininity really is and what taking care of yourself looks like and you know how you can express yourself a lot of persons fall into low self-esteem a lot of persons think they're not the prize hello and a lot of persons feel as though it's like a war for them where i see what i want and this is what, how I want to treat myself. I see what I want. I see where I want to go, what I want to go after. But what I'm being taught, it's not it's not aligning with it. So it's as though there's this friction, there's this tension of what am I supposed to do now? And then some persons make it seem so sinful and so wrong. So it's like, it's either you're going to obey this or you're going to go over there and be a sinner. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but so let's talk about it a little bit. You know, like even this whole modesty thing. What, what are your thoughts on it, even as it ties yeah. into femininity? Well, when it comes to what you just mentioned, it's so funny because I made a video I'm going to po post on Gali Femme probably today. And a, a big part of femininity is divesting altogether from the system, you know? Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of feminine pages that are like divest. And I don't, I don't want to go too deep into like the whole like, um, what's it called? Um, dating outside your race and stuff like that it's, oh, it's not yeah. about that right but it's just i want my friend said it the best she said i can't wait for a point that black women just they just do whatever they want like <laughs> she's like i can't wait to the time and the date that black women just forget about what black men are saying like just do mm. 
you like just do you and a big part of femininity is not following the status quo it's actually just especially godly femininity let's talk about godly femininity again it's about going to the opinion of god the approval of god and not man that cutting off people pleasing that's why that's so big when it comes to godly femininity worldly femininity i don't know what they're doing I mean, there's some aspects of worldly femininity that's trying to like cut off people pleasing. And then there's patriarchal femininity, like I mentioned, but mm-hmm. a big part of femininity is stop people pleasing. Like, I don't care. I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't care. You're a sinner. I don't care. That's your opinion. <laughs> I don't care. Like, and really just, you piss people off because you don't mm-hmm. care. You're doing you and what's best for you. What's in your best interest. And black women need to get to that point of like, you know what? I'm going to follow God. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to follow God. It's like, y'all are doing religion. And if that's where y'all are at, wonderful. Godspeed. But I'm going to go this way. Okay. So what God promised me, because I believe I'm good enough for it. And that's it. I'm going to go yeah. this way. Okay. So a, a big part, like I said, feminine is just divesting altogether. And when I say divesting, that means like completely like detaching and unplugging. I'm like, I don't care about the opinions of man. You just yeah. don't care. Like, <laughs> you don't care. And it's not a thing of pride or whatever. You just don't care, man. If I, if you yeah. want to dye your hair, Amanda, if you want to dye your hair purple today, who cares, bro? Who cares? Like, Come on now. Oh you know what I'm saying? That's why I said like, I mean, it's not about like what you wear and what you don't wear. Who cares? It's about who cares. And I don't, I don't want to be irresponsible by saying that. There's nuances. I'm just saying yeah. generally, it's like we can't keep being controlled, manipulated and doing things because, oh, it makes my mommy look good. Oh, because the church. Oh, because I have to look like a good Christian girl. Oh, because how about you follow the Holy Spirit? There's yeah. that. OK, I want to mention that. But when it comes to the whole thing of like uh, modesty, child, I be talking about that ain't doing anything. So if y'all want to join, okay, Godlyfem Fem Masterclass, GodlyFem.com, G-O-D-L-Y-F-E-M.com, okay? But um, <laughs> I talk a little bit about modesty, not a bit. I actually did a whole workshop in the masterclass about modesty, sensuality, and sexuality because it does intersect. But one thing I was saying about modesty is Modesty is not behavior modification. This assumption that only women are supposed to be modest and not men, and it's not a heart posture thing, and you don't give people the tools to address heart posture issues is irresponsible. Mm. Men can be immodest. They can. Again, it becomes a thing of policing women, especially black women, on their bodies. Okay? And it's like, that's not right. Because at this point, now you're demonizing body types and you know what it is because modesty is only applied let me not say only but let me just this is something i've noticed especially when it comes to the black community we are a lot harsher and stricter on black women being modest and we don't bring the same energy to white christians white evangelists Mm. like white evangelical christians we don't you can have two women same body type wear Mm. two-piece bathing suit not doing anything seductive. They're just swimming or just, you know, at the beach. One of them is going to be demonized. Same body type. Same outfit. One of them looks pure. No one says anything. There's nobody in the comment section. No one's making think pieces about it. That's wrong. That's partial. You're showing partial judgment because you don't see Black women as humans. And I'm like, no, it's, oh, that's a modest. So why is this white lady with blonde hair right with a white family at the beach why is that considered purity joyful mm-hmm. i said no, no no no. we have to be honest with our misogyny war you know what i'm saying like we have to be honest with our own biases that this is not it has nothing to do with scripture you're just biased because you have internalized that a black woman's body is inherently sinful mm-hmm. and it's a cultural thing they had to demonize us and they had to dehumanize us to, how do I say, um, how do I say, to make us accept, how do I, I don't know the word, it's, it's, it's escaping me, to make us escape, uh, as, uh, as, accept um, certain mistreatment and certain injustices because, oh, well, they're not human anyways. Yeah. So it's like, y'all don't bring the same energy. 
across the board. You don't bring the same energy to white women. You don't bring the same energy to men. So what are we mm. talking about? The question shouldn't be, should you wear a crop top or not? That's not the question. Because everyone's conviction is different. That's what I'm saying. No, it's to be, it's a, this is a cultural thing. The question I tell people, I tell young women, I said, it's not about that. If Jesus was to come right now, would you feel like you have to cover up? If the answer is yes, then perhaps it's a heart posture thing. If the answer is no, then okay. I'm wearing a, what's it called? Uh, 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 sh my shoulders are out, right? Mm -hmm. I'm wearing a tank top. If I was to see Jesus right now, I would not feel a type of way. If I was wearing mm -hmm. a crop top right now, I would not feel a type of way. I would feel like I'm looking good. That's it. Wow. <laughs> I feel like I'm looking good. If I'm wearing a mini dress, I would not feel any type of way if Jesus was here. I wouldn't. <laughs> and guess what? I'm still going to go to heaven. I'm still going mm -hmm. to heaven. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know yeah. I'm going to see you there? I'm going to see you there in my crop top. I'm going to see oh. you in my mini skirt. I'm going to see you. Right? Yeah. Jesus approved me. So that's what I got to say when it comes to modesty. Oh, I don't. See, I'm telling y'all, this, this wholesome conversation. I'm telling, I love that though. I love it. I love it. I love it. And we see it so prevalent in today's society. The whole just inequality and I say bias, partiality of, as you were mentioning, you know, race and men. <sighs> Boy. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. But I definitely love that you mentioned modesty for men. Because I do think that a lot of persons don't believe that men can be modest. And it's only the women that are making men fall into lust. Really? That's why so, I said so like that. And it's like, why are we responsible for someone else's purity? Like, it's like, that. that's not right either. And that's not biblical. That's not righteous. You're not responsible for other people. People are responsible for themselves. So I'm not responsible for your emotions. I'm not responsible for your purity. I'm not responsible. No, mm -mm. you have to have the tools to know how to govern yourself. So this thing of like, oh, women are the bane of men's existence. No, it's stupid because men will be turned on by anything like a freaking ankle and they'll be turned on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, for real. Like, stop yeah. blaming women for everything. I said, how about you address your lust? How about men in the church stop shaming women and start discipling men? How about that? Ah! You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I said leave. How about, I can't wait until black women just do whatever they want to do. Like, leave black women alone. Like, <laughs> leave us alone. Okay? <laughs> it's like, instead of just saying like, you know what? Black women, they fine. They attractive. And I got a little bit of lust in my heart and I need to fix this. No. Oh, it's because you're a child. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you go and repent for your lust. You go and deal with your lust. Okay? Yeah. Because it's how it's how people not talking as well that Jezebel is actually a spirit as well. It's not just a woman. It is a spirit, and trust me, I know a lot mm -hmm. of people in general who struggle with the Jezebel spirit. I'm not saying it's not out there. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that still, it's incomplete, right? Yeah. To just stick a label on someone because you are so out of tune with yourself, and you know it is sinful right mm -hmm. to like someone or to be attracted or maybe you think it's simple to be attracted to someone that is not your spouse so therefore either this person is supposed to be your spouse or this person is jezebelic that's stupid like mm -hmm. that's stupid right like one i ain't your wife two i'm not jezebel i'm not saying for me i'm just saying for any woman like why, <laughs> why does it have to be this thing because your you, your your loins are being tickled oh it's that person's fault no you're human just because you're aroused by somebody that you don't uh, take accountability for yourself. I'm attracted yeah. to this person. Yeah. I'm attracted that I like what I like. I got eyes. I'm a man, right? It doesn't have to be this thing of like, oh, it's because no, even if that was the truth, eat your food. <laughs> you're like, you looking at everybody else, your food getting cold. Eat your food. Okay. Learn how to govern yeah. yourself. Go disciple other men. Stop telling, it, oh, it's all it's black women. Oh, they doing this, they doing, mind your business. Eat your food. Oh my gosh. I'm I'm so, oh my gosh. <laughs> that's just, that's really true though. That's really true though. Not, no cap, not, that is true. But like, as we even wrap up, you know, this is good. As y'all can know, she's very passionate about this. And I will link all of her, you know, ministries, everything she gonna do in the description okay 
But what would you say to a female right now, females rather, who one, they're struggling with their feminine, they're struggling with their self-esteem, they're just confident in themselves. How would you encourage them or what would you tell them um, in regards to their femininity journey and just being, just to value themselves. That's just it, to value themselves. Okay. Holy spirit, activate. Um, I would say always find your identity first in God. And that's not easy for a lot of us because we're so, because again, somebody, some caretaker has failed us or something happened in our childhood that made us feel X, Y, and Z. You got to reparent your mind and you just got to go back to God and get your identity from him. Nobody can give you identity. Nobody, like if you're struggling your femininity journey, guess what? You need to go to the one who assigned what femininity is. Mm, and no. you need to go and find your identity and your worth and your value and who he says that you are. Regardless of people say that, no one has to validate you. And I was telling my friend last night, I'm like, child, I think I'm funny as heck. I don't need y'all to laugh to validate me being funny. I think I'm hilarious. Like, I'm like, I don't need nobody to tell me that. I think I'm beautiful. I don't need a man to tell me mm. that. You're beautiful, I already know. It says in the word of God. And that's what I feel about myself. That's my self-esteem. I feel like I'm very creative. I know, you know what I'm saying? Like nobody yeah. or nothing can validate what God has already said about me. You cannot shame me and say, oh, you need to be more humble. No, that's fake humility. That's not like, you're not actually being humble. That's false humility. You know what I'm saying? Like the opposite of, of humility is not arrogance. You know what I'm saying? Or fake humility. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you're confusing arrogance with confidence and Godfidence. Like I'm confident in who God said that I am. Yeah. And that makes you uncomfortable because you're insecure about yourself. They ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, I don't have to be humble. Ugh, you know, she's not really that feminine because um, I saw her lace showing when I saw her in person. I don't care. Like, I'm just making up stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just people, oh, well, you're not, you know, you're not perfect. Who said I am? Part of being feminine is called, the, the, a feminine principle is called feminine grace. I make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I do make yeah. mistakes. But that doesn't define yeah. me. That don't take away from who I am. That doesn't take away from my value. You find your identity and your value and what you do right and wrong. I don't, yeah. I don't. <laughs> so until you get that confidence from God, ain't nobody can give it to you. You can sit here and watch all the videos you want to watch. You can sit here and rewind this 10 times to try to catch every nugget that I gave you. That's wonderful. At the end of the day, if you don't go back to God and find your identity in him, you're losing. Mm. We can just sit in that. that <laughs> like we can just sit in that. Hmm. Hmm. That is good. That is good. And I love, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for just even just sharing your time with us to share about femininity and all the gems that you draw. Because I know I'm gonna go back and rewind this, okay? Because there are so many gems that were dropped. And I just wanna just reiterate what she said before. You're the price. Act like it. That's it. Blah, That's blah. It. That's it, right? <laughs> blah, blah. That's it. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for joining today's episode. And as I said, I will definitely link everything that Jamoke is concerned about in the description below. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Oh my gosh. But that's it, guys. If you really enjoyed this video, ensure to hit that subscribe button to become a part of my squad. And hit that like button. It really helps to promote the videos to get this word. And who wouldn't want to get all of this word? Hello. Come on now. Let's help a sister out. Let's help a brother out. <laughs> oh. Let's just share this word and just get it across. Follow Jamoke on all of her social medias. Again, it'll be linked down below. And all of her ministries, I'm sure you'll be blessed. I'm sure you'll learn a lot. And I'm sure you just will love her. As you can see, she is a bundle of joy and has an awesome personality. <laughs> I will go further into, guys. Bye. Bye.